Hello artists, it's another week of Art with Mrs. Klein. So today is Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May, which is a very important holiday for the Mexican people. So in recognition of that, I thought it would be great to learn about Mexican folk art. What is the difference between folk art and fine art? Well, folk art is very decorative and you find it on everyday objects like plates um, and vases and ornaments that you might hang up. That's all folk art. Whereas fine art would be the type of art like paintings and sculptures, things that you might see in an art museum that don't really have a function except for looking nice or having a message that a painting might have. Well, even though we're learning about folk art, there have been some fine artists that have been inspired by folk art. One of the most well-known Mexican artists is Frida Kahlo. So here's one of my books in my set of art books. And she made a lot of self-portraits. She was working in the 1930s and the 1940s. So here I've, I'll find a nice picture in here. Here's a self-portrait that she did. And you can see all the decoration around it. That was inspired by traditional Mexican folk art that she incorporated into her artwork. She also really liked to dress in traditional Mexican dress. Even though she was working in the 1930s and 40s and people were wearing more modern clothes, she enjoyed dressing in a traditional way. So here's a photograph of her. And then here is a self-portrait that she did of herself wearing the traditional dress But like I said, today we are being inspired by Mexican folk art, not fine art. And I'm going to give you two choices in projects. So the first project is going to be inspired by Mexican tin art. And the second project is going to be a drawing that's inspired by paintings that are done on bark paper. So if you look in the lesson plan, I have a link to show you the process. You can see some someone making paper from bark. It's pretty interesting. I highly recommend looking at that video. All right, well now it is time to start our projects and so please go meet me at the demonstration table. So I hope you enjoy learning about Mexican folk art. I'm going to give you two choices of projects today. The first one is going to be inspired by Mexican tin art. So this is the first one I'm going to show you. The second one I'm going to show you is inspired by Mexican bark paintings. So here's what the second one that I'm going to show you. All right, so for the tin art, the traditional way of making tin art would be to take a piece of tin and a hammer and a punch, and then you just punch little holes and decorations into it. And you can see sometimes they leave them um, just blank like this, like around these picture frames where you can just see the punch decorations. And then sometimes, like in this bird ornament, the artisan colored them in with paint. So they have some of the punches and then it's colored in. We're gonna do something that looks a little bit like this one. All right, so for this project, the first thing you're going to need is a piece of cardboard. It doesn't have to be very big. This piece of cardboard I just found in my recycle bin. So you could cut out a piece from a cereal box or whatever you find. So a piece of cardboard. All right, then the other things you're gonna need is some school glue. Mine is getting a little old, so I'm gonna use a paintbrush in there, but you don't have to. You can just use it the regular way. Then you're gonna need some kind of string or yarn and some colored permanent markers if you want to add color, but you don't have to add color to it if you don't have permanent markers. A Q-tip, also not necessary, but it does help to have a Q-tip. And some aluminum foil. Now this is just a regular aluminum foil, but if you have the heavy duty aluminum foil, that is gonna work so much better than this regular one, but this is the only one I had. So that's what I'm gonna use. So the first step, I'm gonna show you how to do a simple one first with an abstract design. And then after the simple one, I'm gonna show you how to make 
one a little more complicated like this bird one. All right, so first let me show you the abstract one and it's gonna also show you the process. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna sketch out where you want some lines, okay? You don't have to, you could just use your string and put it out yourself like that. So I'm gonna make a little, maybe I'm just gonna do some abstract designs. And maybe I'll put a little cross in mine. So here's a cross. Ah, that's not very good, but that's okay. I can just fix it, right? Sometimes we make mistakes and that's perfectly fine. So here's my cross. And maybe I'm just gonna do some random designs there. So I have some string and I'm gonna cut that string out or loop it around and then cut it. All right, so here's some glue. I'm just gonna coat this with glue. Okay, there we go, coating it with glue. All right, so I have my glue all on there and now it's time to add my string. So the string is actually gonna be the part that's raised up on here. All right, just to give you an idea of what we're doing. So I'm gonna put my string, every part that I want to be raised up. It's kind of like you're drawing with the string. Just gonna put that there. This can be a little messy, so you might want a paper towel to wipe off your hands. Okay, so I'm gonna keep making my cross. All right, so you can do a better job than me, a little more careful, but I don't wanna waste all of your time. And you can also just put this all around and make kind of like an abstract design. You don't have to make it look like something. All right, so now that's ready. Now it's time to take a piece of foil that you, and you're gonna take the foil and you're just gonna loosely put it on top. And then very gently, rub that on okay you can start seeing your pattern your picture coming through all right so now you can just use your fingers but you could also use a q-tip and you're going to go on either side of all the string that's raised up or yarn all right so i'm going to finish doing that When that's all done, you can just either trim this up or you can just fold it over the edges. All right, so now you can either leave this like this, where your, your design just shows up like that, or you can add color like we saw in that bird ornament, but you would use some colored Sharpie markers. I didn't have too many colors. These were the only colors I had, um, but it needs to be a permanent marker. A regular marker is not gonna work. You can also, if you don't have Sharpie markers, but you have something like acrylic or tempera paint, you might be able to use that as well. But like I said, regular markers will not work. But like I said, this is fine to just leave it like this if you want to. All right, so you just take 
these markers and you have to be really careful because you might rip the foil around here if you press too hard. I did that on one of mine. Okay, that's why if you have the thicker foil, it's going to work out better. All right, so this is what, see how when I add that in there, I'm not pressing too hard, just very lightly coloring that in. All right, so I'm going to finish coloring this in. Now I also said I would show you how to make this bird, which is the same bird that I drew on this Mexican bark painting inspired drawing. So let me show you first how to make the bird and then I'll show you how to make this drawing. So what I used for my inspiration was this. This is actually painted on a piece of bark that was made into paper. So they pull apart the fibers of the bark and pound it and then turn it into this paper and then paint some folk art designs on it. So these, a lot of the designs are of natural things like flowers and leaves and birds. So I'm gonna show you how to draw an easy bird. So the first thing you're gonna need is a piece of paper. And then you're gonna need a pencil to draw with. And it's not gonna, it's gonna be pretty simple to draw this, or I hope it's gonna be simple. The first thing you're gonna do is draw a circle, but you're gonna imagine where your bird's gonna be. So I'm gonna pick my bird kind of in the center, but maybe a little off center. And I'm gonna draw, the head is gonna be a circle, and then the body's gonna be another circle. So I don't wanna start my head over here because there won't be any space for the body. And I don't wanna put my head right here because I won't have any space for the beak. So I'm gonna pick kind of like right here. So the first thing is to draw a small circle. Now what if you're having trouble drawing a small circle? Well, you could find something like I have this and I could trace this or you could have a top to some kind of container um, or something else like there, but you're gonna want a small circle and then a bigger circle. So here's my small circle. Now my bigger circle is going to be for the body of the bird. So here's the finished one. I have a small circle and then I had a bigger circle right here. So where do we put this bigger circle? Well, we don't want it here. That would look like a snowman. And we don't want it way over here. We kind of want it over here. And they're just touching like that. So this circle is gonna be bigger than this circle. All right, draw very lightly because you're gonna erase this. Now, all I have to do is connect that with a slight curve and connect this with a slight curve. Can you see what the bird forming here? And now I'm gonna put a tail. So I'm just gonna put a diagonal line and then I can connect to the diagonal line. Now over here for the beak, I might put a little dot where I want the beak to go out to because I don't want it too long and I don't want it too short. So I think my, my beak is gonna be that long and I'm just gonna draw a horizontal line. And once I have that horizontal line done, I can draw two diagonal lines. And there's the beak. Now the eye, I'm gonna draw a small circle. All right. Now I'm gonna have a wing here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here and then I think I'm gonna end right before the tail. And I'm just gonna make a curved line. So there's my curved line. And that's gonna be the wing. All right, so now once I have my basic bird drawn, then I'm going to erase some of my guidelines so that they don't show up. So here's my eraser. 
and I'm going to erase these guidelines, this part of the circle, and this guideline. All right. And that is an easier way to draw the bird. Now that I have that drawn in there, I'm going to look at my inspiration again, and I see that the wings kind of have some of these loops on them. They almost look like the letter U. And then there's some flowers, which are just circles and designs. And then there's also a border. So you can make yours however you want, but I'm gonna start by making some loops or letter U's for the wings. There we go. And then I'm gonna make some big ones hanging down, I think. And I'm going to erase this here. There we go. Now before I get too far with this, I wanted to tell you that if you wanted to make your um, tin design, this bird, all you would do is draw the bird like I drew here, and then you would add the string along the outline. So I put the string along the outline and on the wing, okay? So you can draw this on a piece of cardboard and then glue the string down just like we did with the more abstract one. I put those around there, okay? So you would just, with the glue, put that around. And then you would just use the same process that you used to make the more, um, the simpler design, this one. Okay, so it's the same process, but I was just wanted to show you how to draw a bird. All right, so I have my bird. Here is my inspiration. I'm gonna try to add some of these designs on there. So maybe I'm gonna make some long feathers coming off here. Maybe I'm gonna draw a flower. You wanna imagine it before you draw it. So there's a circle. And then I'm going to put some more petals which are just curved lines. And then maybe I'm gonna have a very long kind of stem. And this is a folk art piece, so it can be very decorative. It doesn't have to look very realistic. All right, so I'm gonna make some more designs. I wanted to do a border. You can make your border however you want. I made just some kind of rainbow lines here all the way across and all the way around. And then I just put some circles in there. That was the decoration I chose, but you can do it however you want. All right, so there's my inspiration. And when I was done drawing it, I decided to go over it with marker and add marker to it. And I had some very good craftsmanship, or tried to, tried to go right up to the edge of the lines and the shapes and color it in. You can see some areas I should probably work on a little bit more because there's the paper showing. So I might go back and have some really good craftsmanship by coloring in those spots. And then what I did after I colored in with marker, I took a little bit of a brown colored pencil and I just lightly shaded in the background to make it look like the bark that was in my inspiration, but you could just leave it blank. So there you have it. We have two different projects that you can make in honor of Cinco de Mayo. We have this Mexican folk art painting, which I made with marker. And then we have the Mexican tin inspired project using foil and string and marker. So I hope you had a really good time. I love to see your projects. So please email me a picture if you would like and I will see you next time.